Hi guys, welcome to Swedish Plant Guys. Today we have a studio talk. A studio talk is questions that you guys have given us and we are going to answer a couple of them here. I also want to mention our shorts. It's the same thing, we answer your questions through our shorts. Now let's go! So, our first question from a viewer. Pumice doesn't hold nutrients that well. So, how often should you fertilize? This is actually a good question and we've gotten this question a couple of times. But there is a statement here and that is that pumice doesn't hold nutrients well. So we have to take a look at that statement first and then we'll give you the answer to what we consider how often you should fertilize in pumice. But the statement was that pumice doesn't hold nutrients that well. Uh, now, why is that and, and how come? Well, when we give fertilizer to a plant, we always recommend you to mix up your fertilizer with water and then water for your plant. Now, what that actually means is that that fertilizer is added in form of salt. And that salt has a positive or a negatively charged particles. Now, those particles, when we water, the, the substrate or the soil or the pumice, it has to have the ability to both absorb that nutrients, hold those nutrients, and then also release those nutrients to the roots. Now, we call this CEC, or cation exchange capacity. Sounds very... Technical. <laughs> yeah, it sounds very technical, and it is. But it basically means that the CEC is how good a particle or a substrate is with holding and releasing nutrients. And if we take a look at pumice, the gray type of pumice here, uh, it has a low CEC or low to medium CEC. That means that it's not that good at holding on to the nutrients. The nutrients that it holds on to, it can release to the roots, but it doesn't hold on to as much as it should. So, what we recommend you to do is that you don't use only pumice, because then you get that problem. So you mix it up with something that has a high CEC. So that mixture, that pumice mixture of pumice and something else, actually makes so that that mixture has a high or medium to high CEC. What's the usual substrate uh, or what do you mix with? What, what's the most common thing that you mix with? So we actually use uh, a form of pulverized clay that is mixed in with all this, uh, the, the white pumice. And that's a very good way to use it. But you can also use uh, some other organic types. You can use peat, you can use a more uh, processed uh, type of clay, vermiculite works as well. Exactly. Actually, in this type of pumice we have, as we, we can't see the clay because it's pulverized. It's actually everywhere. It's mixed with the pumice. Uh, somewhere you can see small, small clumps of, uh, I think we have some here, some small clumps of, of clay, but otherwise you can't see it. But you could use a more uh, a, a pebble form of, uh, of clay. I know that in, in bonsai, for instance, it's extremely popular to use something called akadama. Akadama is a specialized form of clay that is uh, produced in special areas around the world. I think it only exists in Japan and somewhere in the United States, uh, but it's called something else in the United States. The Japanese word is akadama, uh, but that is actually perfect to mix with pumice. Uh, so if you want to know more about that type of mixture, you can look at bonsai sites here on YouTube, for instance, and, and they give you the perfect mix. Uh, but vermiculite is a, a form of heated clay as well that it gets a specialized structure. And that also has a high CEC. Uh, so when you mix that with pumice, you actually get that function that you want, that it holds and releases nutrients. Um, so if you mix pumice with something else, you can add your nutrients as you usually do to your other plants. 
Okay. Exactly. Just follow, follow, just buy any type of fertilizer that is for plants, um, for normal soil, soil plants, and just follow the instructions. We usually recommend that you water it down. And yeah. You mix yeah. it with your water and you water it. Always liquid yeah. form, yeah. right? And so if, if you just mixed it with something else, you can use, do it whenever you water your other plants. With the and if you have planted your plants in just pumice and nothing else, know that it has a low to medium CEC. That would mean that you have to increase not the amount of fertilizer you mix with water, but more how often you give that fertilizer. And I would also recommend that you have drainage holes in the bottom because what could happen if you start to use fertilizer more often, if you have a closed container, like, like for instance this vase here, it will accumulate down here in the bottom and that could potentially harm the roots. So, but if you have drainage holes in the bottom, all of the excess nutrients and the excess water will go out and go away. So, um, yeah. But if you mix it up, which is what we recommend, then just follow the instructions on normal, any form of fertilizer. All right, perfect. Uh, you almost l led me in on a question here now. If you have, let's say, a Sansevieria and it's in soil, but I want to plant it just in pumice, like I just want to, you know, remove all the soil and put it right down into pumice. Is that possible? Yeah, yeah it's, it's possible. Yeah. Um, if you, if, if uh, the viewers are watching our videos, they know that when we plant in pumice, we actually don't do that. We do not remove the soil. We, we, have, we have a plant like this Dracaena here, for instance, which comes to us like this. It comes in a uh, in, in normal soil. We do not remove the soil here before we plant it in pumice. We actually use this soil and add pumice around and underneath this. Okay. Uh, because, but you could potentially remove the soil. Yeah, you could, but uh, it's much more likely that you harm the roots in some way if you try to remove all the soil. Sure. The roots want to have some, some kind of moisture at all times. So if you start removing all the soils, you might uh, dry out the roots. You might, uh, you might, you uh, might harm yeah, them you might or tear them. them just like, like for instance, a dracaena yeah. here, it has very, uh, yeah, small, usually yeah. very, very, very fine roots. And as soon as you start to go in and take away that soil, you will break a lot of the roots. And also the, if you keep like the, the soil around the plant, in the beginning, you stabilize the plant much more until it's gotten uh, rooted in your plant, in your uh, container. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, uh, all, it also helps to stabilize the plant while it grows in the beginning. So th th to answer the question, you can do it. You yeah. can remove all the soil if you're very, very careful, but you don't have to. We, we've done it like this. We've used this, the soil it came in and then just adds pumice. Uh, uh, we've done that for over 15 years with thousands and thousands of plants. And our experience is that the interaction between the soil and the pumice is very good. You don't get any problems with this. So why remove or do something that you don't have to do? It's so easy to plant in pumice when you do it like this. You just use the soil, put it down and use pumice around. Yeah, and then obviously you step up one size uh, of a pot to be able to, to uh, have pumice around of course, it. Not, of course. Not two sizes or something like that, just yeah. one size up. Right? You can also remove some of the soil. Yeah, the, there's the loosened all, soil. The like loosened, yeah. like, yeah, there, there's al always some loosened, yeah. yeah. Just, yeah. They, usually there's some loose soil on top uh, yeah. and there could be some loose soil on the bottom or there is a lot of, uh, of uh, roots down there. Yeah. And, but just feel and take away what you can, yeah. but don't go in and you don't have to remove all the soil. All right. Keep it like that. Okay. It, it kind of uh, led me in on, on another question and that's probably some of you guys out there wondered, 
why, why should I even bother using pumice? You, you kind of answered it because it's so easy and it's healthy for the plants, but is there something else that you want to add to that question? Why use pumice? Why, why would we do that, right? Well, we, we, we get back to what we talk a lot about in this channel. And if you want to have a good looking, healthy growing plant, you have to consider the roots because if the roots aren't happy, your plant will never be happy. So you have to do everything you can for the roots. So what you have to do for the roots is that you have to find that perfect balance between water and oxygen. Note that I didn't say nutrients here. I said water and oxygen. Nutrients are, we usually say nutrients are somewhat like vitamins for our, our, our bodies, uh, human bodies. Uh, it's something that helps the functions in the body and so on. But what it really needs, the roots really needs, is that balance between water and oxygen. If you have too much, too much oxygen, the roots will die because it doesn't get any water, it doesn't get enough moisture. Right. But on the other hand, if you have too much water, you're actually pushing out all of the oxygen and the roots will die because of that, because you have to find that perfect balance. And you get that perfect balance in pumice, because pumice has the ability to actually hold both water and oxygen at the same time in a very perfect way. I know scientists have proved that the root growth in pumice are up to four times quicker than in standard planting soil. Oh. So that's why we use pumice, because the roots loves it. And if the roots love it, the foliage or the plant itself yeah, just looks is. great. There is also the advantage with pumice that it's uh, inorganic, so you can reuse it. It doesn't deteriorate uh, as soil does. You have to add soil. You have to repot yeah, re quite often. Yeah, repot and add soil. You don't have to repot as often when you use pumice uh, yeah. as in soil. Uh, it's also a positive. I yeah, think. And, and you can reuse it with, if you get a new plant, mm. replace your old one. You can use the, uh, the pumice again. Yeah. So that's a, that's a positive as well. That's a great advantage. Yeah. Yeah. Really, really. There, there is one disadvantage, at, at least if you live here in Sweden, uh -huh. because pumice here in Sweden is quite expensive. Yeah. If, I think it's four or five times more expensive than soil. So that's the huge disadvantage. But I know that somewhere around the world, uh, you can actually have the other way around, because if your country has pumice or has volcanoes in it, it's probably pretty cheap and then it's a no-brainer use pumice for your planting here it comes again another question you said volcano in yeah. your country <laughs> so pumice is what volcano rocks what, what is it what is pumice pumice is the the particles that the volcano throws the furthest furthest away from when it erupts when it erupts, when it erupts it's the first thing coming out of the volcano yeah. and thrown yeah. long way yeah. like okay. yeah okay. because it's quite it it's not that dense and it's not that uh, it doesn't have a high weight to it so it right. it's quite porous so it, the pompeii for instance was buried in pumice and that that's also where 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 they've seen that where you have these volcano eruptions where you have a lot of pumice you can see that where you've only had lava or you've had uh, burnt down soil or something, where you've had pumice, nature actually comes back quicker okay. than in the other areas. Wow. So that's why they started to take a look at pumice to see why is that? Why, why, why were, were nature going back quicker in those areas? Uh, and then they started to experiment with it. And uh, here in Sweden, they started using it on tomato, growing tomatoes. And now I think most tomato growers here use pumice as a substrate because it's that good. Wow. A history lesson. I love this, right? <laughs> really, really nice. So the pumice we use is from uh, Iceland. Exactly, and because uh, we don't have any volcanoes. <laughs> we don't have any no, volcanoes. No, no. We all, we've also used pumice from Greece. I yeah, know, but yeah. Mm. I think further down in Europe, uh, most people use from Greece. Is, uh, it's also almost the same color. It has a little bit different, uh, different sizes. And it's, I think it's a little bit 
more sharp. Uh, but I'm, I'm not quite sure. It's quite similar. Both of them has worked perfectly. So we haven't found any differences like that. Although there is difference if you go with, there is pumice with other colored pumice. There is black and there is red. That leads me on to another question that you viewers has uh, kind of frequently asked us. Why the gray pumice, not the red not the uh, brown. So please do do uh, tell. Well, uh, uh, we don't have. I, I like. I, I'll say that we don't have a lot of experience about the red one here in Sweden. We call the red one scoria. I don't know why, but it's called scoria. Uh, and we also have the black one. The black one is usually used still as a uh, larger stones to uh, file the, on the underside of your foot and so on. Uh -oh. uh, but the different colors also come with different densities and the structure is different. If we take a look at the gray here, it, it, it looks like a stone. It, you can't see any big crevices or nooks and grannies here. But if you take a look at the scoria or even at the black pumice, you can actually see that they are more like, for instance, coral from the sea. It has big holes in it. It, it, it has a different structure. The, the gray promise here has microscopical... Uh, like craters or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, microscopical craters that can hold both water and oxygen. But the scoria and the black pumice, they're more like coral. It, it's, it's very sharp and it has too many holes. So the balance between water and oxygen is better in the gray pumice than it is in scoria and black pumice. However, we do know that yeah, you could you could use you it. can use scoria for instance. I know that uh, bonsai people again they use scoria for some type of mixtures. I also know that people that love to grow succulents uh, also use scoria as a substrate because, as I said, it doesn't hold that much water. It holds more air. Which means that if you have a plant that doesn't want much water, it could be a positive thing that, to use the scoria instead. Uh, I also know that some people mix their soil, their standard planting soil, with scoria instead of pumice for succulents. And uh, you could all, I, I think you could also use it for, for the CC plant, for instance, that yeah. plants that doesn't want that much water. Um, yeah, because it drains the water out much it quicker. It drains it quicker, yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. Thank you, guys. That was all the questions that we are going to uh, take up today and talk about. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And uh, if you want to, uh, please subscribe to the channel and keep yourself updated whenever we uh, choose to uh, give you new videos, which we do quite often. And also, don't forget our shorts. Go in and watch there. There is a lot of questions that we've answered through our shorts. And if you want more information, please follow us on Facebook and Instagram, where you get sneak previews on upcoming videos and sometimes a little bit extra. And until next time... Hi!